What's happening, crypto fam? Happy, happy Friday. Good morning, and welcome back to Love for Crypto. I'm Scott. It's a pleasure to have you here, and I appreciate you taking the time out to consume the content. So, thank you. Little out of breath. So, <clears throat> this week and over, <clears throat> excuse me, this week and over the last few days, David Swartz released um, a vision, so to say, for federated side chains on the XRPL. Loads of people have been raving about it. And loads of people have been on to me like, Scott, what the fuck's a federated sidechain? Kind of been hanging back, waiting for a little bit of a little bit of drip out. So I found a little a little article here from Matt Hamilton on Ripple X Developers, Dev.2, from June the 7th, going quite comprehensively through it. I found it this morning. So I'm gonna read through this for the people who are like wondering what the fuck. Like, what the fuck is a federated sidechain and what on the XRPL? This seems to be what you're looking for. So if you don't want to hear me go through it, it's in the description for you. If you want to read, hear me go through it, then carry on. And um, let's get cracking. So Ripple X is rolling out a community page on dev aimed at engaging the growing up, um, the growing XRP ledger community. The inaugural post was written by David Schwartz at Ripple, one of the original architects of the XRP Ledger, and introduces his vision for federated side chains. Developers around the world are invited to share ideas, provide feedback, ask questions, and join the discussion. Together, we look forward to building trust and utility for the XRP Ledger. Over the last nine years, the XRP community has been committed to advancing the innovation and forward progress of the xrp ledger to dramatically increase its decentralization performance and feature set among the most requested features we have heard from developers and contributors to the xrp ledger is smart contract capabilities brought about by the exponential growth in decentralized finance or DeFi, as it's also known in fact, the number of DeFi developers has grown 110% since 2019, and that number is projected to grow well beyond 2021. However, we at Ripple have long advocated against features that would compromise the XRP Ledger's highly efficient focus on payments. Today, we are proposing a strategy that enables the best of both worlds, federated sidechains for the XRP Ledger. This will enable developers to implement new features such as native smart contracts that interoperate seamlessly with XRP and the XRP Ledger, while also allowing the XRP Ledger to maintain its existing lean and efficient feature set. Federated sidechains allow for experimentation and specialization so developers can enjoy the power of XRPL on a sidechain that acts as its own blockchain. For example, Imagine the potential to branch out to new functionality by slimming down the XRPL's features to a specific subset for a particular use case, or even creating a private parallel network for a permission blockchain. Federated sidechains could very well make this a reality. It's extremely interesting, and we're only just scratching the surface here, guys. So how it works, <clears throat> In order to understand the vision for federated sidechains, it's first important to define a federator, a piece of software that connects at least two instances of the XRPL software. The federator software means anyone who wanted to, who wanted to could run a sidechain to the XRP ledger. On one side, the federator is connected to XRP ledger mainnet. On the other side, it connects to one or more sidechains. The federator would be run only by parties who operate validators on at least one sidechain. The vision is that each sidechain would function as its own blockchain. They'd have their own ledger and transactions just as XRP Ledger does. What makes them sidechains is the federation system which allows XRP and issued tokens to move from one chain to another. Federated sidechains could use XRP as their primary asset. In that case, people could use the federation system to move XRP from XRPL to the sidechain. Then the move XRP could be used on the sidechain just, <laughs> just as it is on the main chain. Anyone could move XRP from either chain to the other. Alternatively, sidechain could use their own native assets 
So people with accounts on both ledgers could move XRP to and from the issued asset on the side chain. So functionality. Federated assets imported onto XRPL itself who trade on the XRPL's integrated decentralized exchange. XRP imported onto side chains would be used for liquidity on their integrated decks as well. This strategy requires three things. Building a new piece of software or the federator. Making two trivial changes to the operation of the live XRP ledger network. Adding new features to the XRPL server software to allow it to operate in a side chain. However, these features would not be enabled on XRPL itself. The current recommendation is to fork the XRPL software so that new versions of the sidechain software could come out without having to make new versions of XRPL software and to reduce the risk of arming XRPL. Super fucking interested. Each sidechain would have a trust account on the XRPL mainnet. This account can hold assets on the XRPL on behalf of users of the sidechain. The account would use a multi-sign or threshold key with the signers being the validators of the sidechain. Each sidechain validator operator registers a signing key that signs transactions on XRPL. Thus, the validators of the sidechain can collectively create transactions to manage the sidechain's main net account. <laughs> The XRP Ledger mainnet has one native asset, XRP, and, is unli and an unlimited number of issued tokens that can represent anything else but don't have the same status as XRP. It would make sense for each sidechain to start with a whole new set of 100 billion XRP, so instead, sidechains have two options for their native asset. Either have a new native asset for the sidechain or set aside some real XRP for use on the sidechain. If the sidechain uses XRP as its native asset, then the chain's account on the main net holds the sidechain's total amount of XRP in trust for use in the sidechain. If the sidechain creates a different native asset, that asset can be issued on XRPL mainnet by the sidechain's main net account. The sidechain can hold other assets and tokens issues natively on XRPL mainnet. Just like with XRP, the sidechain's mainnet account holds a total amount in use on the sidechain. The ownership of that asset within the sidechain can change as a result of transactions and events in the sidechain that the XRPL mainnet never needs to see. Whenever an asset, XRP or otherwise, needs to move out of the sidechain, the sidechain's mainnet account sends that amount of XRP to its intended recipient on the mainnet. This could even be another sidechain's account, allowing assets to cross from one sidechain through the mainnet to any other sidechain. Conversely, to send funds into a sidechain, you would send funds to that sidechain's mainnet account. Someone who establishes a new sidechain should pick a set of initial validators and have them negotiate appropriate thresholds or multi-signing keys. They would then create the sidechain's XRPL main account and set up, uh, set it up so that only the sidechain validators collectively signing power can control that account. If the sidechain's validators change, then the main net account should change its keys to match a new list of trusted validators. No, the XRPL ledger's native multi-signing lists are limited to eight keys or fewer, but threshold keys can support as many signers as necessary for each of the sidechain's validators to be included. So what are the advantages? With this software, anyone can choose to run a sidechain to the XRPL ledger, uh, the XRP ledger. For developers, it unlocks new cases like native DeFi, capabilities and smart contracts. Developers can also build and launch blockchain features that are baked into these sidechains. In the future, successful features could even be ported to the XRPL mainnet. The developers managing a sidechain also have the freedom to decide how their chain works. They, they would choose their own validators for the sidechain and could change the system's rules as they needed with the cooperation of their sidechain's validators. For example, a sidechain could 
operate without transaction fees or reserve requirements. It could operate without its own copy of the XRPL, uh, the XRP Ledger's decentralized exchange, or it could add new transaction types and functionality for storing large chunks of data on Ledger. The possibilities are limitless. A sidechain can be strictly permissioned or nearly permissionless, centralized or mostly decentralized. You could even run a sidechain temporarily while letting it manage real value and gracefully shut it down after it serves its purpose. Immediate advantages of federated sidechains for developers include horizontal scaling. Sidechains can have their own fee system, their own reserve system and their own transaction capacity. Low risk. The XRP ledger doesn't need to change at all. Even the changes that would be helpful are quite minimal. Low effort. Anyone who needs or wants to experiment with blockchain can get started with complete ready out of the box based on powerful, stable and sustainable XRP ledger technology and a long roadmap. So changes to XRPL. Succeeding in this vision requires a few changes to the XRPL software that wouldn't be used on XRPL itself in order to support the sidechain features. The primary change to the software would be to the two would be, it's going to support the unique node list being stored on the ledger. Pseudo transactions to change the UNL would be need, uh, they'd need a hint. A UNL would need to be supported to avoid the chicken and egg problem of needing the UNL to get a ledger and the ledger to get the UNL. Support for the coordination of creating threshold and multi sign key sign and XRPL transactions introduced by the Federator is also necessary. Some API enhancements would likely be needed to handle pseudo transactions introduced by the Federator or Federator Federate communication through the peer network. The XRP Ledger mainnet could also use a flag to indicate whether an issued asset was permitted to federate or not. Some asset issuers, for example, might insist that all holders of their asset be directly represented on the main chain for regulatory purposes, while others could allow their assets to freely trade on side chains. It's always possible to privately allocate some of your own resources to others, with or without a side chain to automate the process but the legal responsibilities of doing so can vary based on jurisdiction and circumstances. When federators see a new transaction on the side chain that affects the main chain, they coordinate the submission of that transaction to the main chain. When federators see a new transaction on the main chain that affects the side chain, they coordinate the submission of that transaction to the main chain. Making these changes is probably the biggest part of this effort because even though they won't be enabled on XRPL, there is still a risk associated with changing the software. For example, some existing code may need to be moved or adjusted, which carries the risk of inadvertently changing behavior. The outline strategy is a starting point to gather feedback from the XRP Ledger community. We invite developers and contributors to the community to comment below. Let's build a roadmap for innovative new use cases together. Extremely interesting, and it's early days, it's just a vision that he's put out there. It's just a vision, so it's going to be interesting watching it develop. See what some other developers come up with, see what David himself comes up with on top of it. it it's, it's interesting, and almost any other. Guys, if you're not looking at uh, some sort of little bit of computer science or coding, I highly suggest you, you have a little look. You don't know, you might be good at it, you might like it, you might enjoy it, you might find a new passion, because I tell you, anyone who's got a little bit of that knowledge under the belt in the future has got a little bit of an head start on everyone else when it comes to certain technologies. Whether it ends up on XRPL or not, we've said all along that there'll be hundreds, if not thousands of ledgers and tokens <coughs> all in an internet of value, giving people a healthy choice. You can either use that, you can use that, you can use that, you can create your own, you can create your own on that, you can create your own on that. And as long as it's all, got, it's all interoperable, it's all good in the end. I think that 
is actually fascinating. Um, and it would be, I mean, was kind of hoping for a little bit more to come out this week. Which is why I didn't do a video on it straight away the minute he tweeted it. But yeah. This is like... I mean, private networks, should, should they be private networks? Do people want private networks? Can't moan, the bank's got a private ledger. If you want a private ledger, if you want the banks to be transparent, then yours should be transparent. But where do we draw the line? Privacy and security? Where's it? Do you know what I mean? Where's it become a threat to security? Giving someone else privacy. It's what you have to think about. There's a lot of naughty people out there that do naughty shit and get away with it because of the amount of privacy they can find. Whether it's dark web, you know what I mean? Private networks, I'm not a massive fan of. I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm really not a massive fan of them. Um, Ripple Pilot's private ledger for central banks launching CBDCs. We all know about that. And again, nah, it shouldn't be private, mate. It shouldn't be private. Everyone should just stop using banks that don't um, switch to transparent ledgers. It don't have to be public in a sense that any fucker can go on there and, and use it and shit like that, but it, 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 it should have a scanner to track transactions and, and let, let me see what the script is and what's going on and how much currency is out there and what's in circulation and blah, 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 blah that we've got with actual crypto. We should have that with Fiat Cash as well. CBDCs, whatever it is. It should be tra tra traceable, trackable, like it just should be. And all this private shit, to me, is all the people at the top just wanting somewhere where they can still go and hide and, and shit can still be hidden and the banking system can still hide how much they tear people's pants down daily. Disgusting, disgusting industry it is. And it needs massive massive change i just hope people like david schwartz actual force change for good don't suck a banker's dick giving him a private fucking ledger make it public as fuck i want to see it i want to see the bank of england's balance sheet mate it's just a company like what why the fuck are they allowed to see mine hey all the people at the top see my balance sheet whenever the fucking hell you want can i see bank of england but i'm gonna actually have going out i'm gonna go and try and find it later on you know so I might have to be able to see it, but you know what I mean? It's probably half redacted, man. <laughs> Blacked out and shit. Anyway, I need to get to work. Yeah, we still have to fucking do it for now. But um, hopefully not for too much longer. Yeah. You know the script, guys. Invest in the internet of value. Invest in yourself. Live long and hodl it all. Till you read it or let it go. Yeah. Wishing health and happiness to you and yours. We love crypto. We love XRP. And we love you. So take care of yourself. And a peace out. I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy. And stake some shit. <laughs>